What's next for Maryland basketball? You are a Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day and these days, new potential hires can feel like high-stakes wagers for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs help find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. What happens next with Maryland basketball? After having one of the worst seasons in a while, or one of the worst seasons that we've really seen a Maryland basketball team have in a tradition of a program that is supposed to be pretty high level, and we're supposed to usually be a pretty good team, supposed to be a team that competes in March, what happens next after you fall short, after you have one of your worst seasons in a while, after you also have a roster that looks pretty depleted, and there was already a ton of holes coming into this year, and we saw throughout the entire year. You guys already know how many holes were on this team in terms of shooting, in terms of offense, in terms of depth that time, in the front line, in terms of balance on the team, in terms of balance of scoring, all those type of holes that we saw all season get even bigger it's like that when your shorts rip and at first it's kind of a little bit of a rip it's just a little bit of a hole but it keeps getting bigger and bigger as you're going and that's what it looks like this offseason is headed towards but can we knit up the hole can we fix the hole can we allow it to get back to the original shorts and the original Maryland basketball that we've kind of all wanted to see and have a team that looks pretty good going into next year. And that won't be easy after we went 12th, finished 12th in the Big Ten, and we went 16 and 17 overall. I was watching Selection Sunday. I was kind of sad. Not really, though, because Selection Sunday is awesome. And I love Maryland sports, of course, but I also just love college sports and, and professional sports. I love everything about them, and I love watching it, whether it's college basketball, college football, whether it's like a selection Sunday or when the playoffs come out or and you're looking, is it Bama? Is it Florida State? Is it Texas? Whatever it is, I like watching that. But I still had a little bit of sadness in me knowing that Maryland had no shot, no shot at all at getting in, not on the bubble, not even close, not in the NIT, the, not in the not invited tournament. We weren't going to be in the March Madness field going in. At least I didn't have to like sweat it out like some of those other bubble teams that didn't get in, whether it's like a Seton Hall or I know there are a couple others. Of course, there's others every single year that don't get in, and then there's ones that do end up getting in. But can this be fixed? Can we get back – can we get back to being a team that is consistently a March Madness team? Can we fix this mess that it looks like Kevin Willard has going into next season? Like I said, there's already so many holes, but the roster change could be – it's already going to be big, but it can be huge. Like the roster turnover, the roster change could be – insane the amount of production that we might have coming back next year or it could be not as bad as we think it might be but assuming kind of what we think is going to happen the roster change is going to be a pretty big size roster change there's going to be multiple players that are going to be gone and it's not going to be easy to fix like guys like we've talked about before some of our best players are going to be gone Jameer Young is gone First team all big, 21 points per game, almost five assists, five rebounds. That is gone from your roster. And the thing about Jameer Young being gone is we know how much we depended on Jameer Young this year. Jameer Young was everything for us at games. There was games when he would drop 30 on the road, and we still couldn't find a way to win. There was games where he would drop 25 points, and we couldn't win. 
We couldn't find a way to win games with him having one of the best seasons we have seen a Maryland point guard have. So you look at that and you say, oh, no, we lose a guy like him. We don't bring him back. And we already weren't winning games with him. That's a scary thing to think about when you think about Maryland basketball in the position that it's going towards. Losing a guy like Jameer Young, first team all Big Ten. But Kevin Willer did know this, so you would think he had time to prepare. You prepare for these things. You don't just recruit for the year next year. You recruit for the year ahead of next year and a couple years out. You recruit different guys for this situation. You know after this season you're going to lose a Jameer Young. And so I can't say we have someone in place to replace him, though. Deshaun Harris-Smith right now is – the guy that is our only for sure leading scorer, like the guy that leads our – that the only starter that's for sure going to be back, and he looks like he could be our leading scorer coming back potentially. And you guys know how much Deshaun Harris-Smith struggled, and I talked about him a lot on this thing. I love his work ethic, and I think he's going to get so much better this offseason. He's going to fix that shot because I have faith in that kid. But – Him being our leading scorer coming back, that is a reality that we could face. And you might be looking at that and being like, that's not going to work for this Maryland team. But, of course, there's a transfer portal that opened on Monday. And so you can always go in there. You can always get guys in there. And that's going to be what's going to happen after we lose Jameer Young. And we also lose Dante Scott who was third on our team in scoring, had a, had a, it was an interesting year. He definitely turned it on near the end, but he is still our third, was our third best player last year, was a reliable three-point shooter, and was has been a really good player for Maryland basketball, just a really solid starter for us for the last couple of years. You're going to lose him as well. So you're looking at first team all Big Ten, Jameer Young being gone, you're looking at Dante Scott being gone, and you're looking at it like other guys could potentially be gone as well. Is Jahari Long going to return, or does he want a bigger role somewhere else? Maybe a smaller school, but he can go somewhere and start. Or maybe he just wants to go somewhere else. Or will a guy like Jordan Geronimo be back? Or will a guy like Maddie be back? Or will a guy like Callum Swan Rogers be back? There could be a ton of turnover on this roster because we had an interesting dynamic of seniors playing like Jameer Young and Dante Scott and then guys that were talented but weren't really getting the time that they probably wanted to that would be cornerstones probably of our roster if they got more time, but they just weren't getting that time like a Maddie, like a Caleb Swan Rogers like those type of players, like a Jahari Long, those type of guys, they were talented, but they weren't getting as much time as you would have wanted. And those guys, those guys will hit the portal. That's just what happens in today's college basketball overall. But there is so much to fix. There is so much to do. And the portal, the way Kevin Willard has to use the portal this season He has a huge opportunity to do something really cool and bring in multiple really good players. He got, he was able to get Jameer Young out the portal and Jordan Geronimo out the portal. And, but we have also lost guys to the portal. That also concerns me. Could we lose a guy like Julian Reese, which we absolutely don't want to lose. That's who I'm going to talk about next and all the news about him, because I know you guys want to hear about that. But this year we lost two key players to the portal. And so if you're looking at it and you're like, can Kevin Willard sustain this roster at all? Can he keep the guys that we need to keep? Remember last year we lost Akeem Hart to the portal to Villanova, a guy that we absolutely needed this year, a guy that would have started this year for us. And he, he, left Maryland to take a lesser role at Villanova. And then we also lose a guy like we lose a guy. Oh, I don't know why. Um, Oh, Ian Martinez. I don't know why I was blanking on his name for a second, but we lose a guy like Ian Martinez and he went and tore it up 
at his new school, and he was in double-digit scoring, and we needed those two guys. And so Kevin would have lost two of those guys last year in the portal. So it doesn't make me think that he's going to be great at maintaining players and keeping guys at Maryland when we lost two key players that could have made a huge difference in the season. If we have those two guys, the season looks completely different for this Maryland team. So I don't know if this is going to be fixable going into next year. Of course, we do have two recruits coming in. Of course, five-star Derek Queen is coming in. And he potentially could be one of the best players in the Big Ten right away. But Malachi Palmer is probably going to need time to develop. He could still play right away. He has a really good scoring game. But I don't know right now if I think this thing can be fixed. But there's definitely a lot of work to do in the portal. You also look at a guy like Rodney Rice, who has been – it looks like Kevin Lloyd has had an eye on for a while now – Ever since whatever happened with him at Virginia Tech, he decided to transfer and hit the portal when that portal opened. So we'll see if Kevin Willard takes advantage of the portal. We'll see how much of a turnover that we get. We'll see who decides to leave and what is next. But will the biggest player and the biggest question mark about this offseason stay at Maryland? I will tell you about that after this ad from Nissan and Amazon Fire TV. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Yukon Huskies can only be described as the Armada. The top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder why they landed the top overall seed in the NCAA tournament. They're one of the favorites to win it all, despite four of the six Power Six Conference champions standing in their way in the East region. The Auburn Tigers can only be described as the pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch, and they've really created a lane for themselves, claiming the top spot in the SEC as they knocked off the Florida Gators in the SEC Tournament Championship. They're set to make a run in the NCAA Tournament. The Oregon Ducks are all. The Oregon Ducks are obviously this team's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance in the final Pac-12 tournament, punching their ticket to the big dance. They say win life, go Rogue, and that's exactly what the Ducks have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, and the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Fire TV is your destination from sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experience with smart TVs as well as the Fire Stick TV that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and a lot more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. <clears throat> Julian Reese, our best player that we need to return. What happens with Julian Reese? It's going to be a waiting game a little bit. I don't know when he'll decide to enter the portal. I don't know if he'll say, I'm staying at Maryland. I have no idea. But I do have my predictions, and I do have what people seem to be saying about Julian Reese. I don't know exactly what the junior will decide, but I think I have an idea of what's going to happen. I could be wrong, but this is what I've heard, and this is what I think will happen with Julian Reese who has been one of our better players the last couple of years since he's been a freshman 
honorable all big 10 last year he averaged 13.7 points per game and 9.5 rebounds a double double machine a guy that creates offense down low in the post and a guy that maryland kind of needs in their front court going into next year but this is kind of what seems to happen with julian reese what people think is going to happen basically julian reese is entering his senior year he just finished his junior year and he's entering his senior year and a lot of people think he will enter the portal and i honestly think i agree with that i think it makes sense for a guy like julian reese to enter the portal you guys might want to disagree. I know I want to have Maryland bias and say he should stay at Maryland. But a guy like Julian Reese, it could make some sense for him to leave. Just because I think when you've been somewhere for three years, like a Maryland, I don't think it's a bad idea coming off the kind of year that we had and what our roster looks like going into next year. If his goal is to compete at the highest level, and maybe try and go somewhere that's really big time, like a blue blood type of program, and maybe c compete for an ACC championship, uh, whatever it is, Big 12 championship, SEC champ. I don't know what it is, but if you want to do that or compete for even a national championship, you might want to go somewhere a little bit more in, in a good spot to win games. But if his goal is to make it to the NBA, maybe you could go somewhere that's a good team for sure. But they have had a good track record of developing players and then also somewhere where he's going to be the star and a, and a guy right away. And I don't know if that's not Maryland overall, but it depends on what his goals are. But I do think when a guy has been somewhere for three years and a lot has gone right and he's done a whole lot for the Maryland program, sometimes I don't think it's a bad idea for them to go and try something new and – I think that's a real possibility, a really real possibility, and probably the probable thing that will happen. I also was thinking about it and what his sister did. You guys all know Angela Reese, who's at LSU, is one of the most famous people in all of college basketball, not just women's basketball, in all of college basketball. His sister started at Maryland and then transferred to LSU, so she wasn't afraid to transfer. It seems like that's something their family is okay with, and so I'm looking at the situation and saying there's definitely a real possibility of him transferring. Sometimes your family is going to encourage you to stay where you are, that it's not better on the other side. But when I look at his sister's situation, I do think there is a possibility that he, his family might be encouraging him even to leave. I think that's a possibility. I'm not saying that's what's happening, but I'm thinking that is a possibility but there's a couple of ways this could go one way is he could enter the portal stay in the portal and, and go find somewhere else to play wherever that may be i have no idea what it is going what it would be college basketball it's really hard to predict where a guy will go but he should have some pretty big time type of opportunities that's one thing that he could possibly do another thing is he could enter the portal not really like the options and decide that the best thing he could do for himself is to stay at maryland that's kind of what i'm hoping to happen and then there's the third option he could just not enter the portal and stay at maryland and maybe the fourth option is to go to the nba but i doubt that's in his cards overall but I really do think that if he leaves, Kevin Willard has a ton of work to do. That is for sure. Kevin Willard has a ton of work to do if he leaves. Then you're losing, you're losing your top three guys in a team that wasn't good. And Dante Scott, Jameer Young, and Julian Reese. And then you're going to have to go big time in the portal, Kevin Willard will. But you also have a lot of spots that are open. But if he stays, I think that front court can be something special. Derek Queen and Julian Reese together. I a lot of people are saying that talent conflicts, but I, I don't really think that happens. I think Julian Reese can play the five. I think Queen can play the four. And I, I, I really like those two together to have potential to do some really cool things down there. And Maryland can go kind of uh, – they could have two guys down low and – play more old school ball instead of more of a four around one look that I know they've done a lot of, but I do think it could have some advantage of having him back in a, I mean, a huge advantage having him back, but my best guess is he enters the portal 
at the very least, enters the portal. That's all I'll say, but I'm pretty sure he's entering the portal. Maryland Terp has already entered the portal, and who is that and how big of a loss this is? I will tell you about that after this ad from LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for your role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the, has the tools that help find the right passionate people for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to the best professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people, making your process easy and intuitive. LinkedIn Jobs knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have time and the resources to hire. 2.5 small businesses use LinkedIn Jobs for that reason, for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash stock on college. That's linkedin.com slash stock on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Noah Bachelor. Maryland Terrapin has already entered the portal, basically entered the portal right away, which wasn't a surprise at all. But I have an interesting take on Noah Batchelor. I think we didn't give him a chance. I think he could have been an impact player this year. I think he was better than what Kevin Willard thought of him. I don't see him every day in practice. I don't see what he does. But I didn't think Maryland utilized him enough this year. What do we lack? all year we lacked shooting all year in the worst way possible and noah bachelor could have potentially been our best shooter like i don't know if anybody on the team was a better shooter than him maybe you could argue jamie kaiser maybe dante scott and just the way he was shooting but as like a natural shooter of the ball where you're like he should be coming into the game to shoot the ball i think noah bachelor was our best shooter I don't think he had confidence because I don't think he ever felt like no matter what I do, if I miss shots, if I make shots, I'm going to play the next game. And when you play like that, you play tentative and you don't play as well as you probably want to. And I don't think Kevin Willard gave him enough of a shot. If you really look back at the season, I think he could have been, I think he could have started potentially. Like I think he could have been a, a small ball of four instead of Jordan Geronimo and offered way more balance, way more floor spacing, and really gave us a better offensive dimension. I think he could have been in the rotation. I, I think there was a place to play Noah Bachelor, and I know earlier on the season he was getting time, and then it kind of slowed down, and that was my problem. In the in the tournament, in that tournament that Maryland played in, I think it was called the Asheville Championship, where Maryland lost to UAB and Davidson. Uh, that was a game where Noah Batchelor had a pretty good first game in that in that tournament against UAB, had a really solid game, and then Maryland decided to start him against Davidson. He didn't play his best ball, and then it was like I didn't see much of him for the rest of the season, only in spots. But I really do think he was a guy that could have helped. He had a good game at the end of the season where he shot like three of seven from the three-point line and gave us a boost. I really think his shooting could have been used this year, and I don't think we used him enough. But at the same time, he didn't play a lot, so I can't say it's a huge loss for us. I think it's a loss, especially with the amount of guys we're going to lose. I totally expected him to transfer. I like was almost 100% that he was going to leave just because he was a guy that came into Maryland as a pretty like solid recruit after he switched from Memphis like really late. I think he had to like get something to like release his NIL or whatever it was, but he he was a guy that came into College Park with some like decent expectations, nothing crazy, but I thought he was a guy that was going to be an impact player for us. But I don't think he really got the opportunity to do that with this Maryland team. I think he could have done a, a lot more overall, and that's just one of the guys that we're going to have to replace. But that's another scholarship open for this Maryland team. So it'll be interesting to see where it's going to be used. But I don't think it would have been bad to have him back next year, but it 100% makes sure makes uh, sense 
for him to leave next year and go somewhere else. If I was him, I probably would have done the same thing just because I don't think Kevin Willard really valued his talent or really thought a lot of him overall. And I just don't think he really had – it was in our future plans, even with the depleted roster we were potentially facing next year. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.